The rising debt in Nigeria is a major concern. As the country's total debt figure will jump, as we've been told, to 77 trillion naira, if the National Assembly reconsiders President Muhammad Buhari's request for 22.7 trillion naira ways and means loan. The federal government revealed that the incoming administration will inherit about 77 trillion naira debt by the time President Muhammad Buhari's tenure ends in May. Director General of the Debt Management Office, DMO, Patience Unia, disclosed this in Abuja while fielding questions from journalists at a public presentation and breakdown of the highlights of the 2023 Appropriation Act. Although data released by the DMO had put Nigeria's public debt at 44.06 Naira trillion as a third quarter of 2022, the federal government plans to further borrow to finance its supplementary budget as well as the 2023 budget. Joining us on this show right now to discuss Nigeria's rising debt profile is Paul Alaji, the Nigerian economist. Welcome to the morning show, Paul. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, very quickly. Yeah, good morning and thank you so very much for having me. Yeah, very quickly. I mean, uh, the introduction repeated a point made by uh, Patience Sunia of the Debt Management Office that Nigeria has the prospect of a 77 trillion Naira debt profile. What uh, do you think are the implications for whoever becomes president of Nigeria by May 29, 2023? An empty treasury, a difficult economic situation, or, well, what else? Well, the challenges are ahead uh, for the next president starting May 29th, 2023 are enormous. It's beyond having empty treasury. It's beyond having over 77 trillion. What many may not know is that there is no even plan to boost revenue from 2023, 2024. And if we continue to borrow at this rate, by Q4 2025, our debt profile would have increased to 100 trillion naira because we don't have something significant to boost revenue. It does not mean that with our population, we cannot generate up to 20 trillion naira for federal government alone. Of course we can. Of course we have. But are these monies getting to the treasury of government? It's another question entirely. What seems to be certain is that Without we are spending even the little, the monies we are borrowing on, on are a lot of concerns. 2023 budget you mentioned, Doctor, reveals that government will spend 5 trillion naira, exactly the figure submitted by President Buhari and signed by him was 4.99 trillion naira, is what it will spend on personnel for government workers, which I think is necessary. But even though we need to do a lot about Or Orosai report, as mentioned by Mr. Kabwezi, but as if that were not enough, we will spend over 6 trillion naira. 6 trillion naira not to pay back our debt, 6 trillion naira just to service our debt. The Ministry of Finance has revealed that of all one naira we generated in 2022, 80 kobo of all one naira was spent to service debt, not to pay them back. What did we use to pay uh, salaries? What did we even use to finance Mr. President trip? What did we give members of National Assembly each time they sit in their chambers? What did we give them? Most of the monies are borrowed. And for the first time in history, in that 2023 budget, we will now be spending more money to service than the, compared to the amount of money we will spend on capital expenditure. Anybody going around to campaign and is throwing up his babariga, I think I say pity to such person because the task ahead is enormous. And I will tell you why I said it's enormous. When you borrow so much and you have a central bank that is also devaluing, it means your debt profile will keep increasing. And I will quickly show you the relationship. 
Each time we devalue our currency, all the monies we borrowed from outside Nigeria automatically will increase in volume. 2021, specifically, around February or March, during Q1, when Central Bank of Nigeria devalued uh, Naira, what we saw was that one trillion Naira had their a debt profile. When you investigate the debt profile, as Mr. Showare have said, it will discover that significant amount, not all, of the monies we are borrowing was a result of devaluation. And that is why economics keep, say, keep saying that when it comes to the issue of economy, you cannot undo the issue of economy separately. You have to take an holistic approach to this issue. Then when you keep borrowing and your value, the value of your currency keeps going down, and most of the monies you are borrowing, just as we have submitted again for 2023 budget, are coming for internal debt from internal debt, that is internal sources. What you are telling the labor market is that prepare for a higher unemployment figure already. Unemployment is above 33%. Youth unemployment is even higher than that. But with the recent budget, the recent debt profile, we are saying that, hold on, this is not enough. You are going to witness higher unemployment figure in the coming period. Thank you very much, Mr. Alaje. So the World Bank has said that Nigeria's debt um, service um, co um, cost to revenue ratio could rise to 160% by 2027, except broad-based reforms are, are implemented to unfreeze the you know, uh, fiscal policy. I'd like to get your take on some of the reforms that ought to be done, particularly with regards to our revenue, revenue cost. We are borrowing over 10 trillion, over 11 trillion. Uh, some of the monies we borrow, 3.3 trillion, will be given to those who are, pro who are buying oil for us in the name of subsidy. The money is not coming directly to the economy. Over 3 trillion is going into that. Of the same amount we are borrowing, we are going to be spending over 6 trillion. So the money we borrowed is for what exactly? To pay subsidy and the remainder to pay. Uh, to service debt. So World Bank and IMF, have, um, even different international organizations have been speaking to Nigerian government. Q4, World Bank had written to Nigerian government to say, you need to make choice. I spoke with uh, one of your colleagues, your correspondent of business, uh, uh, Mr. Bosin or Morfai. We had a lengthy discussion on this, that Nigeria needs to make a choice. Unfortunately, the foundation, the fundamental for the choices, as recommended by World Bank, UNDP, IMF, they are not made today. What many Nigerians are after is what will happen to the next election. What we don't know is that this budget, even before the next election uh, comes to play, and we're going to wait for another three months to four months for the next leader to get to office. We don't even know who we come. So the reforms are very clear. First of all, we need to do something about subsidy. We need to do something about value of Naira. We need to make policy about insecurity so that food uh, uh, inflation will significantly reduce. Unfortunately, not so much is said about food security, not so much is said about empowering the private sector, especially manufacturing sector. For a population as ours, any country you see, a country with the largest population, what you see is that such economy try to improve manufacturing. I will give you an example. You United States is the largest in America. Brazil is the largest in South America. Uh, Germany is the largest in western part of Europe. And Russia is, a, is the largest in uh, eastern part of Europe. Nigeria is that of Africa. China is the entire Asia. What are these countries doing that we are not doing? Their manufacturing component, they deliberately grew them to above 30%. And the real standard we should have is about 40%. But when you talk of manufacturing, what is the manufacturing component? I mean, what is the uh, GDP, manufacturing component of our GDP? Today, when manufacturers want to assess FX, myself inclusive, when you want to assess FX from Central Bank, you, hardly, you may even wait forever. We are forced to go to the parallel market to sort your FX. And you wonder why demand is growing in the parallel market to import equipment into the country so that you can get some people employed. I'm afraid until we have holistic, first of all, our selection process of those that are leading us must not be based on who is popular, who has a religion, because of course, at the end of the day, your hunger is not going to lose. Hunger is not going to consider whether you are popular or not. When you have your unemployment grow to about 40%, which is the prediction, and you have the uh, narrow uh, rate going to about 500 out of official market.
market. Be waiting for over 800 Naira uh, parallel market. A lot are waiting for us in this year because if you, when you even look at IMF projection of the one third of the, uh, of the world going into a, a, a recession, even though they, they, they projected positive growth for Nigeria, but that positive growth you need to compare it with what our population growth is saying. So you know that we have a lot in our, with, in our hand. It's not time for anybody to go to campaign rally and be dancing. It's for okay. the person to discuss real issues with us. Okay. What are you going to do about issue of debt? Because it's a big stone that is on our throat. We can't swallow it. We can't vomit it. We need a surgeon to remove it from our throat so that our economy can be free right now. Good, good to see you, my, my friend and brother, Paul Elijah, once again, and a happy new year to you. Uh, so how do, we, how do we grow dollar revenue? How do we grow naira revenue? What's the role of subsidies? I mean, those three insights. Well, we have a lot to do with revenue. And I must tell you that revenue is not rocket science. It's just that we are not ready to generate them. I must also put a caveat a, 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 in a conversation with a state governor. He had mentioned to me that he has commissioned a, an agency to start collecting revenue from some Okada rider and so on and so forth. I smiled and I said, Mr. Governor, I don't think that's the right way to go. Because when you look at people that are poor, as at that time, people living in multidimensional poverty, according to UNDP, were over 80 million people. The recent report, it's now over 130 million people. Uh, and I said, those are not the people to tax. In fact, you need to have a program to support those people. But who do you tax? Not my figures. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, there are agencies, in, I mean, there are sectors in Nigeria that even when we were in COVID, they were growing in leap and bound. Unfortunately, the revenue that went to FRS and different states and different places they are supposed to pay revenue and charges, money that went to government was reducing. In in fact, government was even pampering these uh, sectors that because of COVID, they were given palliative. Meanwhile, most common men on the streets of Nigeria were not given palliative. That's where our money had. One of them alone declared trillions and trillions of Naira in revenue. But I wonder why government is not making so much of money. And we have not one, not two, not two, not in tens. We have them in Nigeria. And I can tell you that revenue collection is not rocket science. It's just that we are not ready to collect the money where they belong. Okay, uh, Mr. Alaji, you are talking about revenue. I like your comments on the finance bill, which the uh, Minister of Finance says will be signed in four days. One day or uh, two days already gone, and that finance bill has not been uh, signed. But it's a very problematic uh, bill. How do you have an appropriation act without a finance act, which is supposed to address the issue of revenue? And stakeholders have said too many contradictions there. And then second, Patient Sunia, the DG of uh, DMO, their management office, is telling us that uh, the National Assembly should uh, pass, approve the securitization of the ways and means for 40 years because that will reduce the interest rate from 18.5% to 8.5%. What are your thoughts on these two issues? Well, uh, we should know that even if the National Assembly passes that, we are still holding the money. You know, I made comment in 2017 and 2018 on, on, on your television station and another television station. I said, the strategy of government may be how to reschedule, how to reschedule, and how to uh, seek debt forgiveness. In 2019, that dominated some headlines. The truth is that most of our debts today are not what can be canceled because they are commercial. I hear a presidential candidate that said they will pause. <laughs> the truth is that we will, will be faced with stiff sanctions across the world, especially if you don't pay uh, your commercial loans. It's not, it's not going to be funded. Nigeria may be faced with sanctions. So for, for restructuring of ways and means, Nigeria needs to know what that means. When there are a gap between government receipts 
and uh, government expenses. It may approach the central bank for such advances to be given. And respons the responsible thing government should do is as soon as the receipt you projected comes in, that's the revenue you are projecting comes in, you are projecting comes in for you to collect such money, it should be paid back. But what we have seen with this new revelation, which is completely new to some of us, is that some of those money when they came, they were not even enough to meet government responsibility. So should we reschedule? If we don't reschedule, government will further be repressed. And uh, the National Assembly, we also want to get, we need to get commitment from the federal government. How would you repay back? You see, we want it to be at 8%. And we have not done something significant about making more revenue. And I said when 2022 budget was uh, presented and signed by the president uh, that we're going to generate, was it 8 trillion naira? We saw during, uh, at the end of President Buhari's administration, we did not generate up to 8, 8 trillion naira. Rather, the government went back to National Assembly to borrow over 800 billion naira uh, in the name of supplementary budget. And I can I can tell you 2023 budget, uh, we don't know who we, who we emerge as president, but if it's the same attitude to revenue, the same attitude to expenditure, I tell you we may even go back to, uh, to ask for more supplementary budget and we might be saying that it should be 100% financed uh, by debt. So the way our means could be restructured uh, to give that leeway, but the question that many Nigerians have and many economists have is the issue of trust about the proper management of the economy of Nigeria, proper management of Nigerian finances, and hoping that uh, even when this is restructured, are we sure that we will not get into another uh, bottleneck? When you look at numbers, what was our debt in 2015? What is our debt today? By what percentage has it grown? Are we sure that when we reschedule and say uh, 40 years, we are going to uh, be we are going to be coming out? And what, why do we want to? So me, it's, a, it's, it's as if we are kicking the can down the street, and we are waiting for the future for us to have the miracle of some sort, and that by that we'll be able to pay eight uh, percent. And there are a lot of reasons why even the eight percent, if we say we'll pay today, I can tell you, in a, in a matter of three to four years, it will be too much for Nigeria to pay. And the, the, the evidence are there for us to say that in the next three to four years, even the eight percent will be very bothersome for us to pay in the coming period. All right, still on revenue, let's talk about that because you talk about company income tax as one of the drivers in terms of revenue. However, the employers in Nigeria are complaining of the multiple taxation, saying that it could actually mean that smaller businesses in Nigeria would close shop come 2023 if the Finance Act of, or Finance Bill of 2022 is assented to by the president. In view of this, or in line with this, what's your alternative um, recommendation based on the fact that multiple ta taxation has the double edge of, yes, increasing revenue for the government, but also posing a threat to companies in Nigeria, particularly small businesses. Okay, so let me first uh, clarify what I, I said the last time. I did not mean CIT. I was not referring to comp uh, company income tax. There are revenues that should go to government for organizations that are returning revenue in trillion. Yes, I said in trillions in Nigeria. As a revenue person, uh, somebody who play in the field, I can tell you that uh, there are several handshakes between those to, that are supposed to collect and those that are supposed to pay. Unfortunately, the Nigerian people and Nigerian government are to change in the process. That is why you are not seeing the kind of revenue both the federal government and the state government especially. I give you an instance. Uh, we approach a state government for revenue generation and the organization to pay what belongs to that state. We've already spoken with them even before approaching the state. Uh, say some of four billion that was supposed to go to the state in revenue. But when we approached the state, the head of uh, revenue, uh, internal revenue, had uh, called some of, the, uh, some of the assistant of the state governor. And the assistant to the state governor said, don't worry, we are going to collect this money themselves. Only for us to discover that some envelopes and some bags are exchanged hands. That is why the state governor, till today, the state is still ravaging in poverty. When the poverty report was published, the state was, was of course, among those uh, that was listed among poor people. Four, trillion, four billion era may not be a big deal for a state, but I tell you, it can help alleviate some level of poverty. And that is a say, imagine what should be going to federal government from these different organizations. So, but I can give you my word. See, I mean, not less than 20 trillion era. Our budget is uh, 20, uh, 21 trillion. But what should come in revenue for that 
that budget is not less than 20 trillion naira. And I don't mean that you will need to break the bank or you will need to borrow any money. But you see, revenue work is not done with like a dasical attitude. It's not done when you, are, when you are waiting that revenue will come. You have to go to the field. That is how it's done anywhere in the world. And if you are tired of going to the field, you need to create system and structure that people will naturally come and pay revenue. If not, there are stopping blocks ahead. You spoke about the issue of uh, multiple taxation. Uh, and I tell you the truth. Indeed, there, is, there are a lot of issues around multiple taxation because the easy way out is what different levels of government are looking at. For instance, somebody has paid for signages to authority in Abuja, uh, which of course is the Department of uh, Outdoor Advertising. But the local government in Abuja haven't had agreement with the same organization, goes to the uh, poor shop owner and locks the shop or pays the car on the shop and say the same person should pay for the same thing. Eventually, how will the person push the cost? He puts it on product and you see the price is going up. When that repeats itself for multiple people uh, who are buying, then you, when uh, the Bureau of Statistics surveys them for to know what the inflation figure are saying or ask for how much they are selling their product you see inflation going up so taxes could actually induce in a way what the prices of commodity would be especially when the uh, when the number of people that are buying because of that pressure is, is, in, is increasing. It will surely show in, in the numbers. So for us, I, I strongly believe that the, uh, the issue of multiple taxation is real. I have been victim of uh, multiple taxation for some agencies of government, our organization have been, and a lot of Nigeria indeed. But we are saying that there are fresh money or there are monies that we are collecting, we are not collecting enough, and there are a lot of exchanges going behind the curtain that the federal government and state government need to do something about. And I hope that during the meeting at National Economic Council, government and representative of Nigerian people will be very serious about generating more revenue okay. to bring our people out of poverty. Because when you say you bring them out of poverty by central bank advancing money to government and also borrowing excessively, the impact is going to be on inflation. Okay. The impact is going to be on Poverty. Okay, Paul, the impact is going to be on employment. Paul, if you can hear me, I mean, I mean, if you can hear me, straight on, but you're, you're spot on. I mean, I can even tell you one that can fund our budget as we speak today. You can get 30 trillion as we speak today from dead capital. If you whip up dead capital yes. of real estate, the government owns 30 trillion a city. Now, these are empirical arguments that have been made. That's one. Let's go back to this ways and means issue and securitization. As we speak today, do you know the bond yield of our euro bond? And they are securitizing this for 8.5%, which is way beyond our euro bond threshold. Are we not going to lose money based on that securitization? Certainly we will. Uh, but you know, uh, the debt management office in their wisdom, they may be having access to some information that we don't have. So, uh, and as agency of as agent, agency of government, there are other information that they may have that we don't have. I don't work with the agency, but I want to give them benefit of the doubt. Maybe there are some other econometrics or other mathematics they've put together for them to be putting forward that figure. But you see, <laughs> even if you go with eight percent, it's a matter of time because the foundation is destroyed. The foundation is revenue, and that was why I like what the DG said, that the problem, Nigeria cannot continue to borrow indefinitely. It will put that, the agency is more or less in a bad light. But what many did not know is that those that are supposed to be relieving the stress and the issues around the agency are the revenue collector from immigration to custom to FRS and so many other agencies of government that are supposed to be helping to collect revenue. Unfortunately, they are not doing enough. Then also, I, I don't think you can uh, bring rates down to maybe 5% or 4% without having basis for it. I also think that the National Assembly, we need to, maybe if they are economists, to advise them on what the government has presented. Because this is not political. If you make mistakes to pass, of course, uh, I, I tell you, all of us will pay for it. Some of them will remain in the assembly, some of them will not, but I believe their family members and those that are related uh, to them who are Nigerians will pay for it. But let me quickly say this on the issue of debt and why, why I am even concerned about what we are borrowing. Now, when you borrow, 
You asked for what purpose? Government have also said, we are borrowing ourselves out of recession. Now recession is gone. We are borrowing ourselves because of infrastructure. So there are three reasons when it comes to argument of borrowing that economies are presented over the year. The first argument is what is happening to debt to GDP. Debt to GDP, by the way, is the least among the three arguments. For Nigeria, debt to GDP still seems to be, uh, to be we can accommodate it. So, but the second reason is what is happening to debt service, not debt, debt service to revenue. Debt service, when you look at revenue, we are expecting. In fact, 2022 uh, debt service to revenue was 80%. That should be around 33%. But we have uh, uh, about 80%. For 2023, debt service is over 6 trillion. Compare that to what government says we generate in revenue. And you see, we have never been able to meet up with revenue target. But the last but the most important one is what is the percentage of total debt? I mean, the growth rate of debt, I beg your pardon, compared to the growth rate of the economy. When you compare where we were in 2015, less than 15 trillion naira debt, to 2022, end, end of the year 2022, approximately 70 to 77, depending on the figure you want to use, trilli uh, trillion naira. By what percentage have we grown? In seven or eight years, if you like. But what bombs. percentage have we grown? But when you look bombs. at the economy, the economy is struggling to grow at less than 2% on the average. Well, growth expected, according to patients to near, is 3.3%. Whether that is high enough or not, we don't know. This service to uh, revenue ratio is put at 80.6 percent. However, you know, as we begin to uh, wrap up, I'd like to ask you about subsidies. The Minister of Finance says subsidies will have to go by June. What is the guarantee that the incoming administration will agree to that? I will not say no. That's not our first assignment. We want to settle down first and uh, allow Nigerians to still enjoy a uh, subsidy. How realistic is that projection by the Minister of Finance? Well, I doubt if that is realistic. Um, I've had engagement with some of your colleagues on this. Uh, the administration have just kicked the count down the road for the next administration to pick up the issue of subsidy. Uh, so subsidy, we have to go. But let Nigerians know, what are we subsidizing? Are we subsidizing PMS or are we subsidizing exchange rate? A country that the currency is susceptible to devaluation. I can prove to you today that what we are paying for is not the value of PMS. What we are paying for is exchange rate. What was exchange rate of fish and parallel markets in 2016, 2017? What is it today? So if at 180 naira or 250 naira, whichever you want to use, if our exchange rate were to be what it was before, and the price of PMS is what it is today, I can tell you that there will be no need for subsidy. That is the equation one. The second equation we need to understand is when it comes to the issue of subsidy, you will put your country under more pressure. As a matter of fact, under national income, economists will say income equals to consumption plus investment plus the difference uh, between, uh, plus, uh, I beg your pardon, government expenditure, but the difference between import and export. What government will do is to remove that from government expenses into directly into consumption, either co pri private consumption or for uh, invest uh, or for public uh, public consumption because people will now need uh, to pay for, uh, for 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 subsidy directly. Here is where we have the challenge. When you ask people to pay directly and nothing has been done to their income, nothing has been done to their living standard. Eventually, people may find themselves on the street of Abuja, Lagos, Edo, and Kano protesting because they will suddenly realize that as government has marketed the issue of subsidy, they have not done something to the issue of their welfare. I am by no means supporting not removal of subsidy. I support that subsidy should be removed, but as an applied economist, I must tell you, it's not going to be an easy task for any government, whether now or the one in future. President Buhari administration has said subsidy was removed in, two, in year 2020. I laughed because I know that the fundamental for subsidy removal has not been done. You must have your local refinery running. The four refineries should run. The private refinery coming mainstream should be active. If they are not active, we are only joking 
about subsidy removal. Two, we have to have some level of stability. President Buhari, when he got to office, some of you journalists spoke with him, and he was very strong on non that, that he will not devalue the, uh, the, the amount we are exchanging Naira for dollar. But some economists had advised him, uh, one of them has advised him, that he should even allow free flow of Naira, that those that are traveling abroad will not be able to come. And I laughed again, because the clothes we all wear, myself in Abuja and three of you in Lagos, all the fabrics are imported. They are not made in Nigeria. So what happens to our children that we spend 80% to import, I mean 80% of the uniform they wear, whether in public school or rural school, they are all imported. We need to understand that economic is holistic that we, than, we, than we think. So subsidy removal, I doubt if it will go completely in 2023. What government may do is to perhaps shift the goalpost by saying it's no longer going to be 180 or 187, it's not going to be maybe 250, but until those fundamentals of making refinery work on first hand and also finding stability around the exchange rate, I doubt if Nigeria will ever be able to remove subsidy. Well, on that note, we'd like to thank you very much, uh, Paul Alaji, for joining us today on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.